Hi, I'm Dwayne Nicol. I'm one of the Adobe Evangelists. And today I'm going to show you some really cool features for developers for Lifecycle Data Services and Lifecycle ES2. We're going to first start by setting up a development environment and then we're going to progress in a series of other exercises which will be released in subsequent weeks showing you how to do various third-party connections to the Lifecycle ES platform. So first of all, I've set my computer up, I've got a laptop running, and I have Lifecycle ES server running on my system. And when I installed Lifecycle ES2, it also installed a bunch of third-party libraries uh, for working with web services, and as well, it installed the Lifecycle ES SDK, which is very handy if you happen to be a Java developer to invoke services from Lifecycle ES. To set this up and start working with it though, it takes a few minutes, and that's what we're going to show right now. So onto the system, you can see I've got Lifecycle started. It's the JBoss stock turnkey installation and it started running on uh, port 8080. And I've got a version of Eclipse and we're going to set a brand new project and uh, set it up to include all the necessary jar files and go. So first we click new and this one we'll just call Adobe ADC. Click finish. You notice that the uh, Lifecycle uh, ES2 runs on the Java SDK, the uh, JDK 1.6, which is an update from previous versions of Lifecycle ES. Within this, I'm going to set up a new package to contain all of my work. So we'll call it com Dwayne's World TV, and we'll call it ADC. Now within here, we'll set up a new Java class. And before we set up this class, we're going to have to change the name of it or know what the name is of, of the class and what, what it's going to do. Now, Lifecycle has set up, uh, the Lifecycle team has set up some quick starts for you to get working with Lifecycle. These are very, very easy. So I have the first one uh, from this URL right here. Uh, you can go in and just cut and paste it. And this one is simply converting a document from one form to another. Uh, you can convert a document from uh, to a PDFA document using the Java API. So I'm going to cut and paste this code. And the class name on this one is Create PDFA Document. So I'm just going to keep that because I'm too lazy to retype it. We can literally cut and paste our code in here. Now it's created the class, public class, for this. Um, when I first cut this in, I've got a uh, lot of red X's, and that's because I haven't yet imported all the libraries. Now, if you want to know which libraries from the SDK to import, you can read the comment at the top of every Lifecycle ES2 quick start. So the minimum I have to have is the Adobe Dot Converter client jar, the Adobe Lifecycle client jar, and a few others. Since we're going to be doing a couple of these today, I'm going to import all of the jars that I need to work with. Additionally, there's a few other non-Adobe jars that we may need later on, such as the third-party jars. This first particular quick start is going to use the EJP endpoint, and the EJB endpoint will uh, not require some of the SOAP jars, but later on we'll need them. So, I've got my class set up, I've got a lot of red X's, We'll have to go to the Project Properties and start importing the jars. Now the jars, when you install Lifecycle ES, uh, you will have a directory that's called the, the SDK or Lifecycle ES SDK. And in this directory you have five subdirectories, Client, Libs, MIS, Samples, Schemas, SPI. And the Client Libs is where most of these are. So the common libs are from Adobe, and these make up the bulk of all the things we're going to want to do today. So we're going to import those into the project. You can see our red X's have pretty much all but disappeared. Now if we want to run this and just test out if we've got uh, the right uh, connection, we first have to set the endpoint. In this case, uh, it's localhost 1099, and that will actually run on my machine. And then there is a uh, administrator credential and password that we're going to use to make the connection. Uh, if you want to invoke certain properties or certain services in the uh, Lifecycle uh, SDK, you have to first go into the Lifecycle admin UI and make sure that these 
users that you're going to use or the credentials for it have the right permissions to use. So if I go in and I can look on a user, and we'll use uh, Kelvarson, he's already up here because I searched for him earlier, and we can go down the list and select the tab Role Assignments. And for him to do anything with the uh, PDFG, which is the generation modules, we would have to make sure that he has the rights to do the PDFG user. In this case, he's already been added. If the uh, user hasn't been added, you may get some strange errors coming back. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this code, this quick start, I'll just explain what's going on here. Uh, Scott McDonald set this up and it's, uh, it's very well written. Uh, we set up a uh, properties uh, object called connection props and then we set the default EJB endpoint, we set the transport protocol, the server type, in this case JBoss, and the username and password. And then we create the uh, factory object for the service client and we pass it the connection properties here. And then we basically make the document converter service client and feed it the factory to create the client. And we're going to read an input uh, file. In this case it has to be a PDF file. Now I don't have this particular path on my machine but I do have here a PDF. Uh, we have one called test PDF and it's in a directory of C Munich with a lower case. So I will change this. Remember if you're working on Windows, you do have to escape the uh, backslashes. So that means you have to double up on the backslashes. Uh, down lower, we're going to take the uh, PDF a uh, conversion specifications and set the, uh, the log level. In this case, it's fine. And then just cast the to PDFA method which takes the input document and the uh, specifications and cast it to the return object uh, called result and then we're going to take uh, result extract the document from that and we're going to write it out and we'll write it out to the same directory to make it easy to find and we'll call it adc1.pdf I'll save that and hit our magic green button. Now it seems at this point everything is set up to run properly but we see we have errors and the errors are because we haven't completely imported all of the libraries we need. In this case to invoke from a client we're going to have to install some additional libraries. So we go back to our project settings properties. We're going to have to add some more external jars and these are located in the JBoss directory. There's two jars here Let's select these both. And there was one more that we will need later on. And this one is located in the Lifecycle ESSDK JBoss client. And this one is the, uh, the uh, client library that we will use for the web services calls. Uh, we also have to import the third party jars. Try running our project again. You can see the red X is now terminated, meaning that our document results has been returned. And we now have ADC1 PDF, which was created today, and I can open it up and show it to you. So that's about all you need to get going as a Java developer with Lifecycle at ES2. The SDK is really well written and the code samples are all at this URL that you can download it from. Uh, cut and paste the code samples and it gives you a good quick start to getting your dev environment up and running. Peace, love, may your code compile on the first go.